Okay. Okay. First of all, we are in Mount Carmel, and uh, this is the place where Elijah prayed for rain. Mm -hmm. Elijah prayed for rain here, and also another thing is that first of all, remember when we were in Mount Tabor, there was a king whose name is King Ahab. Do you remember that? There is a king whose name is King Ahab, and he actually married a woman whose name is Jezebel. Do you remember this? Yes. Yes. And then Jezebel brought with her the pagan worship of Baal. Of Baal. And Baal was the god of agriculture and the god of fertility. And a lot of the people of Israel were farmers. And so they started turning away from God and turning to Baal as the one that would send the rain. And so there was a prophet at that time whose name is Elijah. And Elijah was very upset. He had a seal and passion for God. He was so upset that the people of Israel started to depart from God and started worshiping Baal. When the people of Israel were worshiping Baal as the one that would send the rain so that they would have a good harvest, our God is a very jealous God. And so what did God do? He closed the heavens and there was no rain for three and a half years. And so while they were worshiping Baal and asking Baal to send the rain, God closed the heavens and there was no rain in this land for three and a half years. And so there was famine in the land of Israel during the days of King Ahab. And so Elijah was a prophet. And he said one day, now I will pray for rain. And so Elijah was in the cave. We are gonna be visiting the cave today. He was inside the cave. And it says in the Bible that he faced towards the Mediterranean Sea. He faced towards the Mediterranean Sea and he put his head between his knees and then he prayed to God to send the rain and he had a servant with him and he told his servant go out and see if there is any rain and the servant went out and he saw this blue sky blue sky he went back and told Elijah no rain and so Elijah again put his head between his knees and prayed again the second time and that why he sent again his servant and the servant says, no rain. He did it again the third time, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. At the seventh time, Elijah, uh, the, his servant Gehazi said to him, I saw, I can see a cloud the, uh, the size of a man's fist. And Elijah said, I can hear the sound of rain. And so he told his servant, go and tell King Ahab to go back to his chariot city, which is in Megiddo, to go back to his city or else the rain would overtake him. And sure enough, then the rain started to come. Now we are here in this very special place. Why is this a special place? Here we hear Elijah. Elijah prayed first time, was not answered. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. At the seventh time, the heavens opened and the rain started to come down. Now, some of you here may have a prayer in your heart that you've been asking the Lord for many years. And it has not been answered. Some of the people that we may know may be asking for something that as you have been asking for the Lord to do something for many years and it has not been answered. This is the place to pray. Right inside the cave, we will ask the Lord, Lord, give us a breakthrough. A breakthrough so that the heavens would open and then the blessing would come that what you have been asking from the Lord, that you would be able to receive it. Okay, so uh, today, when uh, uh, we, we are going to be visiting the cave, and then that's, uh, I would say, that's where you pray and ask for a breakthrough. Do not give up. 
If there is something that you're asking the, from the Lord, it hasn't arrived yet. Do not give up. Just like Elijah. He, if he had given up, then there would be no rain. Then there would be more famine. Then there would be more poverty in the land of Israel. But because he prayed, and he persisted and persevered in prayer, then his prayer was answered. And so this is, uh, so after, okay, first of all, the church is, itself is called the Church of Stella Maris. When we go in, there's an outer door, and then there's an inner door. And after the inner door, if you go to your right, you will see on the wall, you will see some barbed wire, a picture of barbed wire. And also uh, on, with the barbed wire, you see the, the star of David, the shield of David, which is the symbol of Israel. You will uh, remember the, uh, on the flag of Israel, we have the shield of David, Magen David. It is a different kind of a star. It has six points. Remember, a star usually has five points. And the star of David is actually six points. It's a triangle going up and a triangle going down. And that's a, it has six points. That is the symbol of Israel, on the flag of Israel. It is there. Why? What the meaning of it is called the shield of David. The meaning of it is this, that God is our protector. He protects us at the top and the bottom, right and left, and front and back. Six. And so God is the protector also of this country. Protector of this country, we call it as Magen David, or the shield of David. And you will see a Jewish symbol with a barbed wire in a Catholic church. And so you kind of like wonder what that is for. And it's actually in honor of Edith Stein. Edith Stein is actually a Jewish woman that became a believer in Jesus. And she became a Carmelite nun. She, uh, she entered the convent and she became a Carmelite nun. And while she was in a Carmelite convent, the Gestapo, the Nazis came, took her from the convent and brought her to the extermination camp. And so she has been beatified as a saint. And so you will see there. So take a picture of that because that is connection between the Catholic Church and Israel itself too. Okay, so you will see there. Okay, and, and uh, so I, I guess that's all that I would say. So we're going to go in, but we have somebody here that's special. Father God of the Philippines, Kosi Father Arnie, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, Carmelite. Father God of the Philippines, Father Arnold Dame, uh, this is the third church, I don't know if you explain. Third church built in this area. Uh, the first one, what you see is about five kilometers from here. The second one was near the lighthouse. And the, this is the third one, built over the cave of Elijah on purpose. Uh, this is one of the caves where he lived. And as you explained very beautifully, where he saw the cloud coming from the sea. And also as Carmelites, uh, some of you are Carmelite, maybe third order, or OCDS second order. Uh, we see in that cloud a symbol of our Blessed Mother also. Matter of fact, in one of the chapels, there's a big painting, about five times bigger than life-size, cloud with the Virgin Mary, the Madonna and Child inside the cloud. So it's a symbol of Mary also, but the sign of the rain coming back after the drought of about three and a half years. So this is a basilica. Uh, this church was in monastery built in 1836. And uh, it's also a uh, a place for a hostel, like for pilgrims. We have uh, 95 beds. You might have groups staying here or come for a meal. We have a very good cook and uh, very reasonable prices. Um, and uh, but no special discount for Filipinos. So. <laughs> <laughs> and after you visit in the church, yeah. So there are many things, the paintings in the ceiling, uh, some of the prophet Elijah, two beautiful stained glass windows. And uh, when you go in on the right side, way up on top, is that Elijah, when he was very discouraged and Queen Jezebel wanted to kill him, so he went out and sat under a tree and said, I want to die. 
the gods sent a raven, or crow, you see many ravens here. <laughs> they're not like the crows in the Philippines. They're, bl they're black and gray, black and white, and they're quite tame. So they brought him the food, bread and water every day. And then after he was strengthened, they continued his journey. And on this side, you see Elijah going to heaven in the fiery chariot. And the point stained glass window, and also the painting in the, in the dome. And before you go, you might want to stop in the gift shop over here. And get a scapular from Mount Carmel or look at some of the rosaries, whatever they have. Or a picture of the Madonna with, get a prayer with English in the back. You don't want Arabic or Hebrew or something else. <laughs> so, um, welcome to Salamaris. This is the uh, Superior General in Rome. This is the Superior of our house here. So here we have a delegate, a general delegate who's from Colombia. Uh, I was just telling one lady where there were 10 Carmelites in the community, but from eight different countries. Um, I'm the only Americano. Americano Filipino. Where are you from? 40, father? From the U.S., from Minnesota. Minnesota. But I meet people, they say, nobody from Minnesota talks like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and people ask me, Father Arnie, where did you get your Irish road? In Manila. <laughs> <laughs> because in Mount Carmel Shrine in Broadway, it was under the Irish Carmelites for many, many years. They started in 1953. And uh, so I was in the seminary next door. It's even connected. And then later I was in the parish. So we're going back and forth, back and forth. I picked up an Irish brogue without realizing it. And then with Tagalog and the long intonation. Uh, I was in Manila, Quezon City, for about 25 years. In Iloilo for nine years. In Davao for four and a half years. Malibar ko sa buong Pilipinas, pula apari hanggang gulo. Salamar hanggang malawan. How many of you have been to Batanes? Me. Oh, I have not been. Beautiful, beautiful. You think you're outside the Philippines. Everything's different, no? Everything. About Cebu, Father. Cebu, many times. Of course, our Carmelite nuns are there. Marunong ka mag-Bisaya, Father? No, some in Longo, but not much. I Longo, ha? Who's who's from Iloilo? Iloilo, Bacolod, Bacolod, Bacolod. Yeah, okay. We're the same, no? Iligaynon. So I built a new church of the Carmelites in St. Joseph the Worker in Haro, La Pizza CPU. When I was there, I was blessed in, in I think, October 1995, St. Joseph the Worker. So um, welcome again to Stadamaris. Enjoy your stay.